Welcome to Denver 7 News at 5. I'm Shannon Ogden. I'm Jessica Porter in for Ann Trujillo. Thank you for joining us. So it might all sound bleak, but today Colorado lawmakers got back to work trying to figure out ways to provide relief. Denver 7's political reporter Megan Lopez is digging into the details today. Megan, there are some ambitious plans being tossed around with a pretty big price tag. Yeah, that's right, Jessica. There were more than 30 bills that were introduced today on the first day of the special session. Um, and I added up the fiscal notes to all of them, and they equal about $800 million is what really all of them together are asking for. The problem is the Colorado legislature only has about 200 to $300 million to spend, so that means a lot of those bills are going to have to die. It is really weird. During an extraordinary time in an unordinary year. Yeah, I hereby call the order of the first extraordinary session of the Colorado Senate. A special session to help businesses and families cope with COVID. It is our responsibility to meet the immediate needs of Colorado families. Around the state capitol, things are different. More safety precautions, more masks that some wear and others don't. And we have a number of partners. And for the first time, truly remote public testimony. The one thing that hasn't changed is the legislature's commitment to help. How can we alleviate the pressure that's been put on businesses? Over the weekend, Democrats laid out eight priority bills for small businesses, tax relief, housing and rental assistance, child care support and more. We expect that when we're done, we'll see between two and three hundred million dollars. But Republicans are hoping to get a few of their own passed. I'm working on two different pieces of legislation right now. If there's no wiggle room, there's no reason for us to be here. And I think we're uh, much more in tune with the needs of small business to some degree. Senate Bill 4. Already, though, a bloodbath of bills. Republicans had introduced a few to curb the governor's executive authority and allow counties not to comply. I think many of the bills that uh, were introduced that weren't bipartisan are largely political statements. We don't have time for grandstanding. But it's a discussion that we have to have. We have to find a way that gives the people of this state a voice. The amendment is adopted. An extraordinary session during an extraordinary time that lawmakers are hoping will make a difference. It's not going to solve the problem. Uh, the idea is that this is going to be a little bit of a stopgap to provide some relief. So something we learned late this afternoon is that a Republican House staffer had recently tested positive for COVID and had showed up today. She was sent home. Uh, House Speaker Casey Becker put out a statement calling this a dangerous disregard of health and safety precautions. However, Republicans are saying that that staffer was cleared by a physician to return to work on the 24th. Again, kind of just showing you how tense everything is and how much everyone is taking uh, the safety precautions and, and really trying to make sure that COVID is front of mind for both those bills, but also, you know, for the safety of those lawmakers. I'm live in front of the Colorado State Capitol. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. Megan, thank you.